Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Consider that a preview of coming attractions. We'll be uh, doing hymns really soon, like next week when we move inside. This is the 20th Sunday after Pentecost. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, and all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord, we, we pray, pray that, that your, your grace may always precede and follow us, that, that we may continually be given to good works, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First lesson today is taken from the book of Job. Then Job answered, Today also my complaint is bitter. His hand is heavy despite my groaning. Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come even to his dwelling. I would lay my case before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I would learn what he would answer me and understand what he would say to me. Would he contend with me in the greatness of his power? No, but he would give heed to me. There, an upright person could reason with him, and I should be acquitted forever by my judge. If I go forward, he is not there, or backward, I cannot perceive him. On the left he hides, and I cannot behold him. I turn to the right, but I cannot see him. God has made my heart faint. The Almighty has terrified me. If only I could vanish in darkness, and thick darkness would cover my face. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> the psalm for today is Psalm 22. Let's read it responsibly at the asterisk. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And are so far from my cry and from the words of my distress. Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer. By night as well, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One. Enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Our forefathers put their trust in you. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and no man. Scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads, saying, He trusted in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him him if he delights in him. Yet you were he who took me out of the womb. And kept me safe upon my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near. And there is none to help. Many young bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their jaws at me. Like a ravening and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is melting wax. My mouth is dried out like a potsherd. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You have laid me in the dust of the grave. The second lesson this morning is taken from Hebrews. Indeed, the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And before him, no creature is hidden, but all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one to whom we must render an account. Since then, we have a high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. 
Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. <clears throat> Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own, and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children, and fields with persecutions, and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. <clears throat> in the name of God who creates, redeems, and sustains us. Amen. Those of you who are uh, news junkies have no doubt uh, read the uh, stories about the Pandora Papers that came out. It's uh, the latest batch of leaked confidential papers that shows just how much the super rich from dozens of different countries hide their wealth in offshore accounts and in luxury real estate in cities and resorts all over the world. And there are no real surprises here because uh, previous leaks included the Panama Papers in 2016 and the Paradise Papers in 2017 and they said pretty much the same thing. The sad part is that so many of these super wealthy are politicians who have gotten rich off their countries, the countries they're supposed to be serving. Wealth on this scale seems to go hand in hand with corruption, while the rest of us, while the rest of us abide by the law. Anyway, wealth is the topic of today's gospel reading, but there's an unusual twist to the story. The wealthy person is, uh, in all respects, a faithful member of the community. He's not one of these corrupt types. And he's not a uh, what's-in-it-for-me scam artist. Let's think a little bit more about the, uh, the big four. Possessions, wealth, power, and influence. In this country, it means having the power to tell people what to do. The money to buy politicians. 
the ability to game the system for our own personal benefit, and the advantage of wielding what prestige you may have to get others to do your bidding for you. Now, the young man in the story has a fear of God and a desire to follow the law. He seeks righteousness, and he recognized Jesus for who he was. But he could not part with that which gave his life ease and smoothed the way for him. He couldn't make that last leap to where Jesus was asking him to go. I wonder how many of us could. It's a tall order. We are all rich by the world standards. We have creature comforts that 90% of the world cannot begin to imagine. We take things for granted. <clears throat> Many of the problems that we have today are what we might call first world problems. Problems that would never happen to somebody else because they don't have the luxuries that we have to even worry about that kind of thing. Yet none of us are rich by the standards of the people in the Pandora Papers. That is wealth over the top. We have our culture telling us to get all we can and that we deserve all our possessions. And we should upgrade them often. We use up far more of the world's resources than our numbers entitle us to. If Jesus came right now and asked us to drop everything and follow him, how many of us would? How many of us would walk that path with Peter and Andrew and James and John and the others? And how many would turn away like that rich young man, unable to part with it all? Well, it doesn't appear that Jesus has asked all of us to do that quite to the same degree. The ones he has asked, people like uh, St. Francis of Assisi, for example, or in the 20th century, uh, Mother Teresa, have done so. And we admire them very much. Not to the point where we'd go do it ourselves, but still. The radical form of faith that Jesus has called us to has softened through the centuries so that the power, influence, and large sums of money can distract us. It pulls us toward destruction, and it doesn't seem so bad. Now, we also have the uh, double whammy of having especially in this part of the country, inherited the Puritan tradition from the 17th century. They know that uh, makes us think that our wealth is a gift from God and an outward sign of God's favor towards us, and that we should keep it and pass it along to our own heirs. We are subject daily to everything, from ads and commercials to entire political movements telling us it's our money and we deserve to keep it all and spend it on whatever we want, we'll be damned. But what if? What if we took the gospel to heart? What if we took Jesus to heart, truly to heart, and understood his message as one that truly brings us closer to God and to God's kingdom? to a place where others really are our brothers and sisters and not strangers to be avoided or ignored? Would that new car really be so important? Would higher end clothing and retail therapy matter? Would being, being rich be something to strive for? Are the 1% really so wonderful that we want to join them even though the game is rigged against us? Real life in Jesus' time and in our own time consists of the rest of us, those of us who get by, maybe even do well, but live, learn, work, play, grow old alongside others, some richer, some poorer. We have a good grasp on regular life, but do we have a good grasp on eternal life? Do we understand that Jesus asks us to live in community 
with him at the center of it. It means that we should be living in a theology of abundance, not of scarcity. It means we should hold our possessions lightly, not grip so tightly that our hands bleed. It means we open our hearts and our wallets to put others first, to engage in real servant ministry, as Jesus taught us to do. To live our faith, we do not walk away sadly like this rich young man did. We use our gifts to further the kingdom of God. If our time is of value to God, we give it. If our talents align with the gospel, we share them. If our money can help the less fortunate, we part with it. The idea is that we are in community. The kingdom of God is shared, not hoarded. From it flows every blessing. <coughs> Excuse me. I wasn't planning to get into this this week. I was saving it for next. But uh, as I prepared this sermon and listened to, read this text over and over again, it became very clear that this reading was really here for us this week for a good reason. It is uh, that time of year when in the coming weeks, your fellow parishioners will be talking about what the kingdom of God has manifested at St. Peter's means to them personally. That's because at this time we ask ourselves to pledge support to this parish so that we continue God's work here and in the next year. It's partly about the budget for next year, but more importantly, it's about God's work in this time and place. Do we go away grieving like the rich young man, or do we open our hearts and by extension our wallets to further the kingdom? Now in the years I've been here, and I would, I would venture to say never in the history of this parish, I might be wrong, maybe back in 1865 it was true, but certainly not in my lifetime, we have never had 100% participation in our pledge drive. It would be great to start this year. It's amazing how much we could accomplish with pledges that said, this place is important to me because it is where I am fed to do God's work. Others will talk details, but I found it encouraging that now when we need to discuss these things, the lectionary provided us with a springboard. The rich young man was asked to give up everything. We're only asking that you give out of your abundance till you feel good. Imagine what we could do as a community, not just feed the hungry with our outreach meals, but eradicate hunger. <coughs> Excuse me. Alongside uh, people, groups in this city like Beverly Bootstraps, for example, and uh, worldwide. Give refugees a new start with refugee immigration ministries. Think of the people from Afghanistan who are seeking as asylum here in the United States. Or for that matter, the, those poor people from Haiti who are desperate for a safe place to be and don't even find one on our borders. Who knows what important work this parish will need to do in the coming years. As we followers of Jesus, we should be ready to handle anything that comes toward us. To do so, we need to abandon fear and abandon the notion of scarcity, abandon the worship of money and the collection of possessions that distract us from God and can never make us truly happy. That's Jesus calling us, offering us a better way. And at some level, each and every one of us know already that that is very true. So, let us act on it. Amen. all who are able to stand as we 
join together and recite the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and the world. Grant almighty God that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love and reveal your glory in the world. We pray especially for the church of the province of West Africa and in our diocese for the church of St. John the Evangelist Duxbury, the Society of St. Margaret Duxbury, St. Andrew's Church Hanover, the Global Mission Partnership Program. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. We pray for those serving in the armed forces, especially Ken Christian, James Daly, Justin Anaya, John Schweitzer, Wesley Lefevre, Nick Jacobs, Will Smith, Sean Kiley, Teddy Labello, and all those serving in harm's way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us in grateful thanksgiving for our property ministries. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray for Lily, Chris, Ron, Lloyd, Kath, Kirsten, Roger, Patty, Tatiana, Demetrius, David, Joan, Bob, Peg, Elena, Bill, Phil, Joyce and family, Jim, Jocelyn, Bill and family, Marshy, Ronald, Doreen and family, and for all those suffering from COVID-19, for the injured and homeless victims of wars and climate disasters around the world, for the people of Haiti, Afghanistan, and the residents of Gaza. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, especially Paul Fournier, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Remember all those killed in shootings and other acts of violence, and those who've died of COVID-19 and other diseases, famine, extreme weather, and drug addiction. For George Zarkades, Alice McDermott, and Alice M. Pittman, and for the Bernardini and Delalis families. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess, we confess that, that we have, have sinned, sinned against, against you in thought, word, word and, deed, and deed, by what, what we have done and, and by what we have left undone. undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. 
that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. And the peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Peace. <coughs> Well, we've managed to uh, get into the middle of fall and still be outside, which is a really wonderful thing. Next week, we'll move in, and uh, as I said earlier, we'll have music, which should be wonderful. And uh, so I hope you'll join us. And uh, perhaps if there's some of those people who don't believe in church being outside might come back. Who knows? <laughs> Stranger things have happened. But at any rate, uh, next week we're going to keep the services at nine o'clock for the foreseeable future at least until we're uh well through this uh this pandemic and what remains of it um and then we'll uh we'll take a good look at uh, whether we can go back to our old system of eight and ten but uh for now we'll just be doing the one service at, at uh at nine i find that i'm one of those people who should be writing things down when they think of them and have them here so that when it's time to remember what they are, I can tell you about them. And before this service started, just as I was sitting here listening to the prelude, I was uh, thinking very much that there were two or three things I wanted to mention, and I don't remember what they are. <laughs> so I'm afraid what that means is you'll have to get another email from me this week at some point with some updates for information. Do you want to tell us about Susie? Susie, yeah. Susie Faria, my daughter, uh, has been selected by the presiding bishop to be among the 24 delegates of the National Church uh, to the UN Com 26, uh, COP26 conference in Glasgow. Yeah. Sadly, yes. Sadly, she can't go to Glasgow. She has to do it virtually. She'd really been looking forward to going because, uh, you know, she's been to Glasgow two or three times. She knows the city, but uh, it's not to be. However, she is going to be a delegate, and uh, she's meeting with uh, 23 other Episcopal delegates from around the nation, representing the Diocese of Massachusetts, and uh, probably Province 1 for the most part. So that, it's a pretty, pretty good deal, and she's pretty excited about it. And uh, hopefully they'll get some constructive work done. I certainly hope. Uh, since we don't have any time to lose. Anyway, thank you for, for bringing that up. I think we will continue with uh, the Holy Eucharist, the Holy uh, Communion part of the Holy Eucharist. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of life and light. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we, we remember, remember his, his death, death, we proclaim his, his resurrection, resurrection, we await his, his coming, coming in glory, glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Forget how this is done? Save <laughs> Christ, <laughs> bread of heaven. Oh, 
Christ, the baby. That's all we'll have to start in the first row first. Let's go in. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Okay. That's fine. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. I'm going to have two. No. <laughs> Seraph, the Heavenly Father, with your word and Holy Spirit, bless and sanctify this bread that it may also be the sacrament of the precious body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. He took bread and said, This is my body. Mm. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Live without fear. Your creator has made you holy, has always protected you, and loves you as a mother. Go in peace to follow the good road, and may God's be blessing be with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.